Good evening. My name is Charles Williams. I'm a lieutenant uh, with the police department in charge of the South District. Uh, we come to you tonight to give you an update on the progress that we have made uh, from the beginning of the year through the end of uh, November. What we're going to see in just a minute is our crime stats uh, from, like I said, January through um, the end of November. Once we look at, uh, look at these crime stats, I want you to keep in mind uh, some of the progress that we have made. Chief always tells us in many community meetings that we've been to, we're not big on stats. Um, we're big on safety. And I want you to know that's our main concern is the safety of our citizens. Uh, obviously, we, we do things based on stats because it gives us, uh, it allows us to reflect on what happened last year so we know how to allocate our manpower this year. This is Sergeant McDaniel uh, with us. He works both North and West District uh, with the police department. He's gonna cover our crime stats for us. You take a look at the screen. I'll be breaking down statistics. Uh, as Lieutenant Williams said, this is the crimes through November 30th, 2018 of this year. The first column, as you see year to date, 2017, those are the statistics from last year part one crimes. The next column here, year to date, 2018. In that third column here, you'll see the difference of the crimes. Um, if I start by comparing some of the numbers uh, year to date, 2017 to 2018, your first one is uh, homicides, murder. If you look, uh, we're down one. In most of the statistics, we are down. Um, rape, we're up three, but I want to elaborate a little bit on these are not incidents, they are actually victims. Each number you see here are victims, they're not incidents. For example, if we have a, uh, four occupants of a vehicle, uh, that vehicle is driving down the street and we had a, a suspect or offender grab a brick and he wanted to throw a brick through a window, we have four victims of that crime, so each one of those victims are listed as that aggravated assault where they'll be listed as victims. Okay, year to date the total, we are down 395 crimes from last year to this year, year to date. All right, this column right here is our five year average. Instead of going uh, year to year, we took a, uh, all the crimes in five years and put them together so we can get an accurate number. If you look, we are also, 2751 is our total of number of crimes on the five year average. If you look at year to date, 2018, we're at 1822, which gives us a negative of 929 crimes. So we're down 929 crimes year to date um, on our five year average. Our last column is our percent change. We're down 34% overall as an agency on all the crimes. Um, I must say the men and women of the department have done an excellent job. Um, the chief, you know, the captains, we've all uh, worked hand in hand and got everyone where we needed to be uh, to reduce crime in the city. I was just gonna briefly uh, discuss what we do with these numbers. These numbers are com comprised of totals from our four districts. Our city is broken up into north, south, east, and west. And several of you have attended our CompStat meetings and have heard each of the presenters from the districts uh, present their numbers. So we would take a, uh, a crime such as a larceny from a motor vehicle, which in this case would fall under larcenies. We look back um, last year and see how many larceny from motor vehicles we had and what areas they were in. Um, and then transpose that to this year would give us kind of an idea of where to start. Now, on top of that, we have a, a software called CA Plus. So that information is reviewed daily, both by lieutenants and sergeants for each district. So as we see incidents occurring, then we allocate our manpower into those areas in order to try to prevent it. One thing we come up with for larceny for motor vehicles was the um, motor vehicle report card, vehicle break-in report card. 
What this is is an education tool for our citizens. The officers would go to, say, the parking lot of Walmart, walk just like a regular citizen would, see vehicles that were unlocked, see pocketbooks laying in vehicles, see laptops uh, laying in vehicles, and we would score that on a report card to notify that person once they got back to their vehicle that these things were in plain view and it made their vehicle more susceptible to crime. Um, so what we want, want to, the message we wanted to get was hide your valuables, lock your cars, keep your things out of sight. In doing that, we were able to uh, show a significant reduction in our larceny for motor vehicles. And that's also included in this number, which was a 22% uh, reduction in larcenies. We also do those, the uh, same type um, education piece for um, our robberies with our businesses, especially during this time of year, holiday year, uh, holiday uh, months. We also do it with um, residential uh, break-ins. We go to people's houses, we do a residential survey, notify them how they can make their home more secure and, and less susceptible to being a victim. But that's how we, that's what we do with our individual numbers and, and that's how the main, main numbers are comprised. Good evening, I'm, I'm Don Mosley. I work with the investigative division as a lieutenant. When Chief Williams did his initial assessment of criminal investigations, he wanted to focus on homicides, both past homicides and current homicides. So he created two specific work groups within our division to attack those issues. The first one I'm gonna talk about is our, our homicide unit. It was formed in March of 2018. It's comprised of four investigators and a supervisor and their sole responsibility is to investigate homicides. In the past, when we had a homicide, it would be mixed into the caseload of other violent crimes for that particular investigator, which created a huge time constraint issue. So to date, this particular unit has investigated 11 cases, and in those 11 cases, 12 individuals have been killed. Of that, eight cases have been cleared. One of those eight was deemed to be a self-defense act, so no charges were brought. The three additional cases are currently being actively investigated. If you do the numbers on that, that gives us a 73% clearance rate on our homicides to date. The national benchmark is 61.6%. Uh, In addition to these cases that we've worked, we were able to resolve a double homicide from last year that occurred in October. The second part of our approach dealt with previous homicides, so we created a cold case unit. That cold case unit is comprised of senior staff members who've retired. We've brought them back on a part-time basis. They basically review the case, identify any leads, any technology issues. Uh, for example, with DNA, we may not have had the ability to do some DNA testing previously, but the technology is to a point now where we can uh, examine those items. Uh, with our new practices. So they to date they reviewed eight of the cold case homicides. DNA was identified in one particular case that now meets the threshold so we can test those items. That is a way at a lab. And we developed in another case a witness uh, who is in the, the federal uh, system who may be able to help us with prosecution of, of one of those old cases. In addition to looking at the homicides, uh, they've reviewed 28 groups of IBIS shell casing matches. Now, we take our shell casings that are uh, collected at crime scenes and we send them off to Cumberland County to be examined. And we're looking for comparisons to see if they match other crime scenes. With the group that they looked at, we were, there were 109 individual cases where rounds were fired. We collected shell casings and they came back to 28 different weapons. So that's a significant number in that you've got 28 guns that committed 109 individual acts of violence. For the division in general, uh, case assignment through the end of November, we've assigned 1,384 cases. Our investigators have resolved 897 of those cases. That gives us a clearance rate of 64%. We haven't seen numbers like that since the late 1990s, and for comparison's sake with last year, at this time the division was at a 23% clearance rate. My name is Jay Edmonds. I'm a sergeant with the Police Department Special Investigation Section. Basically, our section was tasked with comprising a unit 
um, that consists of manpower to assist our criminal investigations division and our patrol services division with proactive measures towards addressing quality of life issues and crimes occurring within neighborhoods here in the city of Rocky Mount. What we found is that uh, we were receiving c complaints from citizens who lived within these communities comprised of each one of you all's districts related to illegal alcohol establishments or, or residences that were selling alcohol illegally, uh, residences that were engaging themselves in uh, forms of prostitution or illegal drug sales. This unit was tasked with identifying the complaint, validating the complaint, identifying who the offender was in each of these complaints, and developing proactive measures, proactive measures to get rid of the complaint, to deal with the issue while working along with CID and the Patrol Services Division. How we did this was most of the times we just went and knocked on the door, had a conversation with them, let them know this is the issue, this, this is the information that we're receiving, please stop. <laughs> and a lot of times it stopped. However, other times it required more of a targeted enforcement either through uh, the execution of search warrants, making uh, proactive criminal charges, actually using um, undercover officers and going in and making proactive ca cases to address these issues. The mission was strictly to improve the quality of life in these neighborhoods and to deter the violent crime. What we found is that uh, the loitering, the disorderly conduct, the fights would lead to shots fired incidences or other violent crimes as we discussed earlier with the robberies, the shootings, and sometimes even murders. This has, has a positive effect. Uh, this unit has um, investigated tw over 20 different locations, 14 different offenders out of 20 different complaints. Um, and we've, been, we've had a lot of successes with this. Um, the violent crime, I, I believe Lieutenant Mosley addressed that, and so did Sergeant McDaniel, Lieutenant Williams, when it comprised of violent crime, how we handle that. The, the gang investigations are comprised in those violent crime investigations. Um, this particular unit that was put together was mainly directed towards those quality of life issues occurring in those residential neighborhoods where we were receiving complaints from community members. All right, good evening. I'm Yvette Jones, the community services manager assigned to the support services division. And I'm here to talk with you about the many wonderful community outreach programs that we have within the police department and the things that we were involved in in 2018. The first thing I'll start out with is the chat with the chief program that was held in 13 locations throughout the city, which allowed the chief and the command staff to go into our various communities and talk with citizens one-on-one -on -one about some of their crime prevention and public safety concerns and issues. Another program that's an extension of our Citizens Police Academy is our inaugural Clergy Police Academy that was held in the spring of this year in which we had 23 local faith-based leaders to participate in. This year in 2018, we celebrated our 20th year of our Citizens Police Academy program. And so we held a celebration in um, honor of our Citizens Police Academy alumni in which we had 125 out of almost a thousand graduates to come back and participate. So very proud to announce that. In addition to that, we've continued our 18th year of our Junior Police Academy. We started it back in 2000 and we had 26 teenagers to participate in that program this summer. Charted by the Boy Scouts of America, we have our Rocky Mount Police Explorer program that we have 19 members that are between the ages of 14 to 20. This year, this year round program, we had um, our teens come in and they were taken to Gatlinburg, Tennessee for training. We took them to Goldsboro for competition against local area um, teens and they were able to come out on top. And these are teenagers who we've trained and, and mentored in leadership, citizenship, and also they learn about law enforcement as well. Our 2018 National Night Out program was a success this, again this year. It was held on the first Tuesday in August, and we had 20 events that were sponsored by churches, community groups, apartment complexes, and mobile home parks. 
This year, the department partnered with local businesses and um, churches to host our Coffee with a Cop program in six different locations. And as of today's date, we've had 72 adults and teens participate in our Ride Along program. And the Ride Along program allows citizens to actually come in and ride up to four hours with a patrol officer, and they get a chance to see exactly what the officers do during their shift and their daily duties. Some of the more detailed things that we did this year, um, we had an Easter egg hunt, and this is our third year doing it. We partnered with the Rocky Mount Parks and Recreation Department, our y local YMCA, Edgecombe County Sheriff Department, and Edgecombe and Nash Rocky Mount Schools, where we had 184 special needs kids come out. We provided Easter egg hunts with them and provided Easter baskets for them to take home. A lot of times they can't participate in those regular Easter egg hunts and receive as many eggs as they would for a uh, Easter egg hunt that was specifically for them. In addition, we had the Rocky Mount Police Department, Downey's Partnership for Children, and the Nash County Health Department sponsor our seventh annual Child ID event. And this is in observance of National Missing Children's Day, which is held on May 25th. And we had 120 participants from our local daycares, Head Starts, and local home uh, parent home centers that brought them in so that we can photograph them and they'll have something to identify them if they're missing. The first Monday in October is the World Day of Bullying Prevention. And so on this day, the World Day of Bullying Prevention encourages schools and businesses to participate by wearing blue shirts so they can stomp out or try to teach children about bullying awareness. And so this is the second year that we partnered with the school system through our cities, our communities in schools program of the Rocky Mount region to encourage schools to participate. And this year we had 22 of the 25 or 26 schools participate where kids wore blue shirts to school and did different things like develop poems, do drawings, have uh, essays, just different things that they did to bring about bullying awareness information. Through the PAC, a patrol car program, we were able to provide food for 15 families this year who were selected to participate in the shop with the cop program by our local FOP. And additionally, the Rocky Mount Police Department has attended 28 community meetings, participated in 110 special events, and conducted 96 presentations just this year. So that's why I'm tired. <laughs> Are there any questions for me? All right. All right, thank you. I just want to make one or two uh, remarks before I take my seat. But we want to thank each of you for your total support and helping us become uh, a great agency. I must tell you that I have had an opportunity to work in at least 40 better police agencies throughout my career. I was working in so many places one time, my wife thought that I had left home, but uh, I was just trying to satisfy some needs around. But I want to share with you that none of the agencies I have worked with is any better than the agency you have right here. This agency is second to none. What do you say, guys? And we appreciate it. And to clarify that we do have some work to do in, in regards to the shootings. The reason our aggravated assault numbers uh, is so high is because of the violent crime that's committed by different people with guns. And we need to take guns off of the street and that is our focus. And if this agency continues at the rate that it is going, we're going to be a real, real safe city. And I say we're real, real, real safe today. But what we failed to do is to tell the community just how safe we are and just how good we are. 
we very, very quick to, to be negative about issues when you shouldn't be. This agency is a great agency, and certainly the city is great to work with, and we need to talk about it so that we can become great in the eyes of others. Thank you so very much for your time.